Morning, everyone. Hope you're all well. Um, just to start, as we generally do, with uh, reiterating the ambition of the project that we've been working on, in particularly highlighting the bit at the bottom, a service which is easily understood, fair, accessible and beneficial to our residents. This is the uh, feedback of our service vision. Um, so this is splitting people into different routes through our service. So the orange line being light touch with self-service tools. The, the light blue line being more about creating a plan to work together on with automated check-ins and nudging. And then the, the uh, dark blue line at the bottom is geared towards people who need more holistic, multidisciplinary support. So, those of you that um, come to the show and chairs regularly will recognise this as a new slide. So, this is depicting the lines that I've just talked about, but try to take in where people might be in their journey in terms of homelessness, so whether they're immediately in threat of homelessness or whether we're more in the prevention stage and it's the early stages. And it's also trying to take into account the strengths and assets that our customers may have. So you see there in the bottom left-hand corner with the dark group, people that need the full holistic support from multidisciplinary teams are likely to be those that are close to homelessness and potentially have um, less strengths and assets. Whereas the people we're trying to move towards the self-service line are those that are in earlier stages like prevention, and potentially of high strengths and assets. The aim is also that the majority of people will be in the orange area um, so that we can focus our time mainly on the dark blue. So uh, this depicts what we've been working on now and what we'll be doing over the next front, the next three months. So we've been working, and there'll be some updates to follow, uh, particularly on shared plan, understanding vulnerability and the evidence store. Um, we already know pre previously, lots of people are already using single view and the SMS tool. So what we're showing you today. So there will be updates today on the evidence store, um, self-service tools, understanding vulnerability and shared plan. Good morning, everybody. Thanks, Claire. Yeah, so first up is evidence store. Um, and so what is the evidence tool? Uh, we can move to the next slide. So it's a tool that allows staff and residents to easily upload evidence documents where the documents will be stored and managed in one place and viewable in single view. And so why are we creating the evidence store? So currently evidence documents are stored across a number of different systems. Documents are often duplicated across those systems. And we believe that being able to store those documents in one place and being able to add them and view them via single view will mean that there's less duplication and documents will be easier to find. And so in the service vision, the evidence store will be mostly used at the approach stage as we gather evidence about a resident status, but it also could be used as a person progresses through their journey when more documentation is required, for example, after a PHP assessment. So we started to think about what the future experience might look and feel like. And I think we can consider the evidence store as having three distinct stages. So the first stage would be the requesting stage, where as a member of staff, you'll be able to quickly see what already exists, be able to automatically send requests for documents by SMS and email, be able to specify exactly what's required from the resident, and be able to request documents directly from actions that you assign to a resident from within the shared plan. And then the next step is the uploading stage. So from there, residents will be able to clearly see what's required of them. And if they're using a mobile, in an, hopefully we'll be able, they'll be able to take photos directly from within the tool. And then moving on from when they've submitted the documents, it goes to the reviewing stage. So uh, where as staff, you'll be able to be notified of new uploads, be able to accept, reject documents, notify the resident of the outcome if the document is rejected, and crucially provide a reason why so they know how to rectify that for next time. So on to our hypothesis and desired outcomes. The hypothesis really here um, that underpins this work is that because we think that there's no consistent approach to managing documents, residents need to retell their story and staff time is wasted. And so we believe that by providing a secure way to upload and manage documents, this will result in a better experience for residents, save time for staff and reduce, reduce reliance on legacy technology. So we expect to see a range of short term and medium outcomes here, um, which ultimately feed into the long term outcomes, which are on the right hand side, um, which are um, we're hoping to move away from UH, 
be able to increase staff wellbeing and provide a better experience for residents. So what benchmarks can we set to measure success? Um, we're really looking at measuring the time it takes to achieve various tasks with the aim of reducing those times in the future. And so we'll be wanting to know what's the average time from requesting a document to the submission of a document? What's the average time from when a document is submitted to when the document's accepted? What's the average time spent manually processing documents that are brought into the service centre? And what's the average time spent collating documents required for common applications like a benefits application? Good morning, just a quick update from the tech side of things. Um, so after building our test version of the evidence store, we're now building the production version, so that's the one that's going to be used in the service. Um, we can save a document and the associated customer information now, which is going to be used when we want to search for a document. Um, we can index that document and we can search for that document. Um, now we've got uh, an API to do these things. We're going to need um, the user interface so that um, users can use this tool. Um, just briefly, an API is something that sends info back and forth between like a website or an app and users and others or other systems. So we've built the API part of it. Now we just need to plug it into the kind of front bit that you click on. So uh, yeah, next we'll be looking at plugging in um, this API into the doc upload tool and into the single view. Uh, so next steps, our next steps are to create a lightweight prototype of the experience for staff and residents and to get some feedback. Um, on the tech side, we're going to start connecting the tools so that documents uh, uploaded using the doc upload tool will start to appear in single view. And we'll also be working with you to gather some benchmarking data, as I mentioned before, on how things, how long things take now so that we'll be able to measure if the new way is more successful. Nice one. Thanks, Chris and Matt. I'll now tell you a little bit about the work we've been progressing over the past two weeks on self-service tools. So as you know, this is web-based tools that will help residents help themselves. And ultimately, this is about reducing demand and saving staff time. So the self-service journey is the orange line. It's the top line on our service vision, um, and also that other branch of information and advice that's available for residents and partners as well. And as you heard from Claire earlier, we really want the self-service journey to be this, this default journey and the first point of call for most people. And at the past show and share, we've showed you some of the little tools and prototypes we've started, but thought it was actually just worth starting to tell a bit of a story about what this actually might look and feel like in practice. So you can start to see how all these little bits um, will, will feed together into this new journey and this new service offer um, for people with high strengths and assets. So this is a story um, of a fictional person called Zara, who might be um, a single mum. And she contacts Hackney to join the housing register. And while she's waiting to speak to an officer, she fills in a little quiz on a tablet while she's waiting that tells her, um, asks for her understanding about the housing situation in Hackney and gives her some answers. And she's a bit shocked to learn that the waiting time for social housing would be 18 years and instead is, is shown some stories of people similar to her in her situation um, who have gone on the journey to find their own private rented place. When Zara then meets um, an officer, she meets Tarek, um, who works in benefits and housing needs, um, and they sit side by side and Zara tells her story. And as she does so, Tarek starts capturing um, strengths and assets and capabilities as they arise and ask questions in such a way to pull out um, these strengths and assets that she has. So for example, um, Zara spent a lot of time navigating the benefit system and actually her experience in doing that um, could be really helpful and those skills that she's learned through doing that could be really useful when starting to look for her own private rented property. And so she leaves feeling a bit more confident um, that she'd be able to find her property by herself. After she leaves, she gets sent um, a step-by-step -step guide to finding a property that she can access from her mobile. So Zara can then add in a bit of information about herself. So she puts in information about her family and she's able to calculate her bedroom need and also her current income from benefits. And this tool also takes into account the benefit cap, which has just been totally confusing her so far, I think as it has many of us, myself included. And so for the first time, she can see actually what she might be able to afford. 
Then as she starts her property search, she's able to track those properties um, in this guide as well and keep a, keep a log um, of her property searches in a list. As Zara starts going on viewings, um, she keeps getting stuck and hits a wall that landlords are saying that they won't accept housing benefits. Through, through that same web application, she's able to request support um, from an officer at Hackney um, and schedules a quick 30 minute check-in call with someone. They give her some advice about how to be a good tenant and, and how to build on her strengths um, to approach landlords in an appropriate way around benefits. And then as a follow-up, they send her a bit more information about tips um, for tenancy training and some videos as well. And then finally, Zara is able to overcome that. Um, she goes on viewings and then again requests Hackney support to secure the property and receive some financial support and assistance uh, to move into her new place. And then a couple of weeks later, she gets an automated text message from Hackney to see how she's settling in. So this is the start of you know, how we might be able to provide some tenancy sustainment support and make sure that people like Zara are actually able to sustain their tenancies once they move in as well. So this is a bit of an overview of that journey we just talked through. And you can see that there's a whole number of different tools that we could build along the way from the housing options quiz, making sure that we're having strengths-based conversations and being able to capture those a number of step-by-step -step guides from calculating what you can afford to tracking a property search, um, the ability to request support and follow up with, with an officer, and then using um, text messages to check in with people and make sure that they're settling in. And where we've begun prototyping over the past few weeks is really around this middle stage. So creating these interactive step-by-step -step guides. And the first thing that we have been creating is how might we calculate affordability uh, when the benefit cap applies. So anyone who's been working with me on this over the past uh, few weeks knows that I've been like losing my mind in, in the maths of this. This is um, an interactive spreadsheet that we've made to help calculate this. So if you put your family makeup as under 35, it will give you some of the exclusions at the side to the shared accommodation rate. So reading this, I might know that I'm a single adult under 35 um, and I have a one bedroom need. I can then calculate the benefit cap. Um, so you can see there that because I live in Greater London, that's the maximum amount of benefits I'd be entitled to receive per month. There's then an option to add a bit about how many children you have. So you can see at the bottom there that changes the maximum benefit cap amount. Um, but for, for the purpose of this example, we'll just go back to being um, a single adult. And then the next step is to check if um, these benefits will cover the monthly rent. So let's say I'm looking at a property in Hackney at the moment, so I can put in details about that and put in information about the um, property rent and it will calculate the rent per month. It then links me out to the LHA website where I'll put in the same information, so this one bedroom property in Hackney, and that will calculate um, what the local housing allowance rate is for that property. So that um, is 295.49. So at the moment, this is, it's still a bit um, step by step, it's still a bit manual. So I'll put the LHA rate in here and you can see that that changes and says the housing allowance rate does cover the rent. But it does show that I would only have three pounds 71 per month to cover living costs after rent. And that is if I'm on the maximum amount of benefit. So that's a prototype that we've been uh, working and developing with three offices over the past couple of weeks. And based on the feedback from the people involved, um, we've got those pop-ups for exclusions if you're under 35, making sure that you can only check one box at a time, giving instructions about how to download a PDF of these results, so you might be able to send them to a resident afterwards. And then also um, just putting the content, um, the DWP, like living allowances, so that you can compare. This is what um, the DWP would expect you would have remaining for a living allowance. I mean, you can clearly see that £3.71 isn't enough. But some of the feedback that we had from the housing advice team um, was knowing that this, this would be a really useful tool, and particularly when there's a grey area, so maybe it's not £3.71, but it's a few hundred pounds left over, knowing if that um, is an affordable amount to live on and being able to work with the housing supply team to do so. So things still to figure out, 
What if someone isn't on the maximum um, amount of capped benefits? What if their income is actually lower than that? How can we take that into um, consideration? Um, and then how can we make sure that this tool is facilitating conversation with the resident? We don't necessarily want this to be um, something that makes the decision for you. We know there's so many variables with this, um, particularly around someone's income. So how can we make sure that you put in the minimum amount of information but to have a really useful conversation about affordability and feel confident to do so, um, backed by the data in, in tools like this. So what is next? We have just been testing this out with some mock cases with, with some officers, but we would love people to try it out with some real cases and use this alongside a resident to have that conversation. And all of this feedback is going into designs such as this, so, you know, ultimately we don't want this to be a spreadsheet. We don't want there to be so many manual steps and going to, you know, the Gov UK website and the LHA website. We want to pull this together all into one step-by-step -step guide. So we'll be progressing the design on that as well in the next few weeks. So if you're interested in, in benefit cap, if you're interested in affordability, if you're interested in step-by-step um, -step guides for residents, that ultimately could help people do this themselves without the need um, of an officer, please let Claire or myself know and we would love to have you involved. Thank you, Em. Good morning, everybody. So a quick update on the vulnerability tool. So a reminder, this is a tool to help um, build a better, bigger picture of a resident situation when they contact any part of the service. So doing two things, so trying to collect the right data at the earliest point, regardless of who that resident is talking to at that time and then being able to determine what level of intervention is right for that person. So being able to understand how to respond best to that person's needs. So are they able to help themselves and potentially go on the orange self-service line or do they need a little bit more support? So last week we shared with you the early designs and prototype that we have built. So the idea is we can consistently across the council start capturing people's vulnerabilities but also their strengths and show, be able to weigh up both of these things to understand what potential level of intervention they need. But also to make this as useful as possible, be able to give the staff member who's using this some resources that match to that person's need. So to be able to signpost or be able to suggest the right response for that person. And we've had an, an amazing response to this. So we've been testing this sprint and we've had 15 people using it. Uh, capturing approximately one snapshot a week. So a massive, massive thank you to everyone involved. There's too many names there to call out one by one, but they're all there, so thank you very much. Um, the idea is we want to get all teams um, using this. So there's a couple of teams that haven't used it yet, so, so we'll reach out to them this sprint. Um, but we want to understand how to, how to make this work best for everyone across the service and also in the contact centre. So the more people that use this and give us feedback, the better. We want to make this as flexible as possible and be as useful as possible. So we're collecting data, not just in that moment, but it's also useful for the next person that might see that data in single view. And we've also been continuing to build out our knowledge bank around suggested prompts and actions that we could give residents um, using the COVID service directory as well. So we've got a good now bank of resources which will help all staff to be able to know what to suggest or what actions to take next. So we'll show you a demo of where we're at with the build, so I'll pass over to Pat. All right, hi everyone, uh, I'm going to show you some things that we've been working on in terms of vulnerabilities. Um, so starting from a resident page in single view, we're going to add a new vulnerability snapshot. Um, so this will take us to the vulnerability app. So we already know that we can add snapshots by add vulnerabilities or assets by ticking some checkboxes here. Uh, now, if we tick a vulnerabilities checkbox, we will also get some resources here on the side that we can share with residents. So res resources have uh, some web links as well as some extra information uh, that we can view by clicking on this view more button. Um, another thing we've been working on is adding these other checkboxes. So if a vulnerability or asset isn't listed here in a list, you can uh, add a new vulnerability, like so. Or a new asset, 
as well. Um, so you can see the, uh, these dots pop up next to the sections. Uh, these are to help navigation and they mark uh, whether a vulnerability or asset has been selected for this section. Um, another thing we've added is some more text boxes. So if a resident has an active case with other service, you can now also specify which service it is, the contact name, and the mobile number for that service. Um, so we can now go ahead and finish and save this snapshot. And this is how it's going to get displayed in a summary. Um, and we can go back to the single view using this back button. And it's going to take us to the resident screen for that, for that resident. Thanks, Kat. I will go back to share in just a sec. Um, so what's next? Does everyone get all things using this? Um, there are a few teams within the benefits of health needs service that we haven't quite reached out to yet. So we'll expect some emails in your inbox uh, to get involved. But we also want to start including uh, people in hospital discharge and mental health liaison as well to try and get a really broad range of people using this and capturing good information that can help the service and other services potentially support, this, support residents in the best way possible. Um, and to do this, so we, the more people that are testing this, the better. Um, we've had a massive, an amazing response, so thank you so much for getting great feedback, but we want to understand um, what needs to change to, to be able to work in this way, to make this tool as useful as possible for as many people across the council as possible, so that I, I, ideally the outcome is we have better data on people, so it doesn't matter who looks at single view, they can get a good understanding of that person's situation and knows kind of how to respond to what intervention is given. An exciting thing um, that we're going to work on next sprint is that we can, we have another API, so thank you Matt for explaining what an API so I don't have to, but we have an ability to pull in automatically some vulnerability data from um, a few sources, including the COVID vulnerable list, so that we can we can automatically show and single view some vulnerabilities that don't need to be captured manually. Um, so we can make as easy as possible the process of showing vulnerabilities in single view so that people can see that information without as many man manual steps. So we're doing, we'll be building that next sprint. So hopefully next Chantel will be able to show that, that, that bit of data being pulled in automatically. Um, and we also want to test whether being able to see these, a balance of vulnerability assets in single view changes the way colleagues interact with that residence. But is it helpful? Does that add benefit? Is it beneficial for the next person that sees that information? And um, so we want to get people using this over a period of time. So not just capturing it in a moment, a moment in time, but almost like over a couple of weeks, um, potentially months, to see whether that changes how we as a service respond to people. So that's vulnerability. Hello again. So last but not least, we've got some updates on the shared plan, which is a tool to enable officers and residents to collaborate on a shared plan of action. And this is where the shared plan fits in with the service within, so it can be used to support various journeys depending on the level of need that somebody has. So an orange line, the shared plan could be used as a self-serve tool. On the light blue line, a shared plan could be used as a PHP and provide check-ins and nudges. And on the dark blue line, the plan could be used to support collaborative case working between partners inside and outside the service for more complex cases. So as a recap, the shared plan is now live. Uh, you can use it to create an action plan with a resident, and this can also now be used as a PHP. Uh, we're always wanting as many of you as possible to get involved and give your feedback, so if you want to try it out, put your name in the chat and we can show you how it works. So this sprint, we've been speaking to residents about their experiences with the Jigsaw PHP and their attitudes towards roles and responsibilities, and we've also been continuing to get feedback from staff on the shared plan tool. So we've been carrying out some phone interviews with residents and while we've spoken to a small sample of people and the situations have been very different, there are a few themes that we've been able to identify, so I'll run through those. The first one is that while people were very complimentary about their dealings they had with officers over the phone, there was anxiety about not knowing what the next steps were or when the next phone call would be and people felt a little bit like they'd been left in limbo. So one person said they felt like they'd been left in the dark and the other person commented they had more communication from us about the research than about their actual housing situation. 
The second uh, insight we had was that the assessment process can be scary. People don't know what to expect and they feel out of control. And so in a desperate situation, it's, they feel like it's their one chance to communicate their needs. So one person said it was a bit scary. There are so many questions and my situation is entirely up to the council. Uh, another person said they were feeling really deflated and it was a massive shock. And then lastly, uh, while there was an understanding of shared responsibility between the resident and the council, and people could recall what they'd been asked to do during their PHP assessment, people weren't using the personal housing plan to refer back to their actions, and they weren't aware of when the actions were due. So one person actually said, you know, what is a personal housing plan? What, what does that mean, even though they'd received one? Another person said they weren't given any documentation at all. They remembered being asked questions, but they didn't receive anything either by post or with email. And we've also been gathering feedback from staff around the shared plan. So some things that have come up this week are more about the goal and the target review date fields not being as clear as they could be. Um, to be used as a living document, the shared plan needs to be clear which actions have been added after the initial assessment and why. Following on from that, the ability to add comments is really important. So an officer can add why, add a comment on why an additional action had been added to the plan. And pre-formatting resources are also priority to be added. And then lastly, uh, some feedback around that when sharing a plan with other professionals, there may be some different ideas about what's appropriate and realistic as a goal for the residents. So if we're sharing plans with other professionals, it's going to be important to collaborate on the goal at the outset rather than sharing the plan with another professional after the fact. So what's next? Um, we're going to be taking those insights on board as we continue. We're going to be working to develop the check-in and nudge functionality. We're going to be making some of the tweaks to the plan based on staff feedback that I've just mentioned. And we're going to be continuing to test with officers on live cases for residents who have a live personal housing plan. Okay, so we are now going to jump onto activity that um, will talk about some of the evidence store um, and managing documents that we were talking about earlier. But I realised there was a whole load of calls there. Um, for people to get involved. There are so many opportunities to try things out at the moment. I think we're particularly keen for people to try out the shared plan. So please do, um, you can let us know in the chat here or you can contact any of any of the team, particularly Claire, myself or Chris, um, if anyone would like to you know, try out the shared plan and give us some feedback on the design or try it, start to try it live with residents um, in place of a personal housing plan. So loads of options and we would absolutely love your involvement and feedback on all of these um, all of these various tools as they evolve. Um, other than that, thank you so much for coming. So nice to see so many of you. And as always, we'll, we'll stay on the line if anyone wants to chat about anything we've spoken about so far. But hope you all have a lovely week and we will definitely see you again in a couple of weeks, but probably with lots of um, requests for people to get involved in things between now and then. So thanks so much, everyone. <laughs>